Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Hyperland with NixOS and assuming you already have Flakes enabled for this thing, but I am going to show you how to set up Flakes real quick at the same time, even though I already made a video about that. But if you want more details, then please watch my Flakes video at the same time bef uh, before you set up Hyperland as shown here. So I close this real quick. So here I already went into my root user and went into the Etsy NixOS path. And as you can see here, I have already flakes set up. So the first thing we do, do is go into the flakes.nix file. And here it is important that you add the input for the hyperland URL. <coughs> this will then obviously pull all the time the new Hyperland setup. And also it's important that you add that you inherit the inputs here as a special argument. This is basically what is important uh, to get Hyperland to work as an input. But you can also use the Hyperland wiki as a reference for that. They will say exactly the same there. And obviously it's important in your flakes setup that you have your username and your system overall set up and the package derivation for your next packages overall. <clears throat> Once you have done that, you can go into NixOS configuration and here obviously you have to enable flakes. And what I also did is I created an additional file called hyperland.nix that needs to be in the imports here. And I show you also what goes into hyperland.nix. So first we add this header. So the inputs as we referred to earlier in the flake.nix file for the inputs that we inherit those. Then I also added a Kashyyyk server. In my recommendation, it is that you first create the hyperland.nix file and only add the header and the Nix uh, the Kashyyyk server link to it. That will then use the Kashyyyk server so that you don't have to build Hyperland from source. So you pull it from source, but the Kashyyyk server already builds it. And therefore it will build way faster because it literally just downloads the compiled binaries already for your system. If you didn't do the Kashyyyk server first, then the initial uh, installation for Hyperland will take longer just because of the situation that you didn't use the Kashyyyk server first. The next part is on how to enable our Hyperland setup here. <clears throat> and here is like literally programs.hyperland enable is true. And then the other thing is that we pull the packages which we referred to from here, which in return is pulled from the flake of Nix file. Additionally, what I did, because I like Tui greet, this is like a TUI, so a terminal user interface greeter, is I have set it up like this here. So we we'll use greet D as the backend and then Tui greet as the as the overlay, what you see as the terminal user interface login. So it's a nice prompt. You don't need it, but it makes it a little prettier. Uh, this is also referred to in the GitHub for Tui greet, which I will link also below. I just changed literally the name Hyperland because it is on the on the GitHub, it's set up as Sway. That's the only change I did here. And additionally, then I just declared some packages that I want to have when I uh, use Hyperland as a, as a uh, window manager or compositor. So here I have set up, oh, sorry. Uh, so I have set up Hyperpaper Kitty because Kitty is the default uh, terminal emulator, then Rofi Wayland because I like it better than Wofi, um, which you can just uh, change the command in Hyperland in the configuration. Then Waybar and the GNOME item theme, which I installed for things like Pavu control and other GTK to applications which are otherwise missing icons because they cannot handle other icons so easily. 
And that's about it. And then afterwards, if you do an XOS rebuild switch, it should build the whole system for you. This will obviously take longer if you didn't install it yet, but that's about it. And if you have done it like that, you should be able to just boot into your system and uh, go from there. So here we are, have this already done. And I show you something real quick, hyper hyperland here. So what I changed in here was literally for what I mentioned with the Rofi that I changed the it from Rofi to Rofi and it's important to remove one dash here because Rofi needs a double dash and Rofi needs a single dash. And uh, for my monitor setup, what I would recommend is also to do specific monitor descriptions with the mode lines because depending on the monitor, it won't be as uh, straightforward. For example, my my internal monitor here, the EDP one, doesn't like anything but 1440p, but I have set it to uh, 2048 by 1152. And therefore I use the mode line, which you can just, you just use the reference online. Uh, there's a mode, mode sync is the website called. And then here I have set the position and the scaling. You can obviously use other scaling, but uh, that's up to you. And then I have just set up both monitors. Then the, like, if I attach a different monitor, it just goes like this. So no description, no name, nothing. And then you just go with that. That's my overall setup I have here. Nothing special, nothing fancy. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time around.